basic principles of fluid therapy in sheep and goat what is the need of fluid therapy in case of sheep and goat? because sheep and goat it is a rear in a flock it's very very difficult to identify the dehydrated animal and treating the cases but if you are applying the knowledge and skill identifying the animals which is having a dehydration you are selecting the appropriate fluid and treating the case we will be having a very good success so first of all before going to the fluid therapy we need to assess the dehydration what do you mean by dehydration loss of fluid either it may be uh, failure of intake liquid fluid intake and the next one is excessive loss due to some other disease conditions like diarrhea or any uh, other disease condition fever so it may be excessive loss may be sensible or insensible so after arriving in the dehydration assessing the dehydration so we are aiming the fluid therapy the primary goal of fluid therapy is we have to give adequate fluid therapy to improve the circulation improve the circulation by and then improving the cardiac output and organ perfusion that is one of the major aim next thing is we have to see the acid base balance and adequate electrolytes replacement because sometimes there is a loss of electrolytes like calcium potassium bicarbonates while having a disease condition so we have to replace that along with the fluid therapy then sometimes it may be having acidosis or alkalosis we need to adjust the fluid therapy and it will be brought to the normal one. so with the aim of this we are going to select the fluids so why we need to give what are the indications so when the animal is in hypovolemic shock that means loss of fluids in the body system so we need to replace electrolyte abnormalities like sodium potassium calcium phosphorus so many things are there in the body and any uh, relative increase at it is to be monitored through the blood gas analyzer or your experience we need to or serum biochemical analysis we need to replace that acid base imbalance acidosis alkalosis uh, it may influence over the uh, disease of the animal in any disease conditions is uh, changes will be always recorded we need to address those things suppose young uh, kids and lambs if it is having a hypothermia and hypoglycemia we need to address fluid therapy in those conditions hyperthermia hypothermia so some animals as i told you the young animals are prone for hypothermia especially lambs hypothermia due to me that see that that almost uh, we are having a very hot temperature the sheep and goats usually is going to the uh, grazing during the hot sun so if there is a heat stress the animal may show some symptoms so we need to provide adequate fluid therapy then any toxin ingested either uh, orally or by contact also so one thing is if it is circulation we need to give diuresis and in case of oral intake we have to give a purgative to eliminate them and the system itself there is a diarrhea starting in some cases and the animal will eliminate the toxins so diarrhea along with the toxin elimination there is a loss of electrolyte and water so that should be replaced all nutrition suppose if we are not providing adequate nutrition or any disease conditions uh, leading to inanition that is anorexia or incompetence will lead to malnutrition that should be addressed as a parenteral alimentation or we can also go oral uh, total alimentation and any bone injury is a trauma uh, due to that there is a loss of fluid or uh, loss of blood also uh, heavy loss of blood so that will also lead to uh, deficit of fluid in the body we need to keep septicemia toxemia conditions there is a, a severe uh, hyperdynamic and hypodynamic changes is going to happen in the body so we need to uh, treat those conditions with the appropriate fluid therapy so before entering into the actual topic we should understand that the basic of water distribution in the body basically the total body weight standard kg means 60% made up of water So it is for the law adult animals suppose uh, young animals means it may be 80% so the total body water is distributed again into two ways one is extracellular fluid that means that is there in the outside the cell that is accounting 20% that is a one third of the 60% you have to remember that it will be useful for us to calculate the normal uh, immunity requirement and uh, the 
fluids to be administered at four to six hours period. So the extracellular fluid, the total fluid, we need to give within six hours. For that, we need to know that one third of the total body weight water is extracellular fluid. Next thing is intracellular fluid, fluid, it is inside the cell. Inside the cell, it is accounting for two third of the total body weight. Again, the extracellular fluid is again having two headings, that is uh, interstitial fluid, that is accounting 15% of the total body The interstitial fluid is present in the in-between cells, that is accounting three-fourths of the extracellular fluid. And finally, this is the intravascular fluid, this is a plasma or the immediate requirement any uh, fluid therapy you are accounting, the immediate requirement is intravascular fluid replacement. That is accounting 5% of the extracellular fluid. That means one-fourth of the extracellular fluid is intravascular fluid. So the intravascular fluid is to be replaced within 15 to 30 minutes of starting any surgery or treatment. Then the interstitial type of fluid is there now. That is to be replaced four to six hours. So what about the intracellular fluid? That is to be given either by oral route. If the animal is recovering from the dehydration and other illnesses, automatically that will be going to take by oral route. That will take into account and intracellular fluid is going to be replaced. So we are just uh, giving a time for the animals to take the water by oral route and it maintaining the intracellular fluid volume. If you are understanding the uh, concept at uh, least fractions, it is easy for us to go for the calculation of fluid uh, total volume and administration of fluid in the sheep and goat. So once the fluid therapy is indicated, there should be some dehydration. Uh, theoretically, there is a three types of dehydration. One is isotonic dehydration. Here, the concurrent loss of fluid and electrolytes. So the electrolytes and fluid is continuously lost. So that is called as isotonic dehydration. Then another one is hypertonic dehydration. Here, the relative water deficit is going to happen. Here, water loss is more when compared to the electrolyte. So the electrolytes are retaining in the body and it is making the hypertonic dehydration. So this example is simple water deprivation, not taking water for a long time. And there is maybe a continuous loss of water. Okay, that will be leading to hypertonic dehydration. What about the hypotonic dehydration? It is a relative water excess. Hypotonic means the electrolytes are lost more when compared to the water. So especially during diarrhea or any uh, other obstructive urolithiasis or any urinary system involvement, there is a loss of electrolytes when compared to the loss of water that is leading to hypotonic dehydration. So why we need to know that? So if the diarrhea is there, we need to think about more electrolyte loss probably there uh, apart from water loss. But water loss also be there, but we have to account for that. So another one more thing is it will be basic for us to assess the what type of electrolyte is lost and what type of the things is going to be replaced. That will be giving some idea. Dehydration is there in animals. It is very, very difficult to assess. So below 5% dehydration is there. It is a normal one for the animal which is having a temporary uh, deprivation of water for a short period. So that is very simple as for us to assess because very difficult. Uh, the, those animals will not show any clinical signs. So simply we will be uh, leaving. We are not going to addressing for any fluid therapy. But if more than 5% of dehydration is there, we need to account for assessment. So what are the parameters we have to fix for the assessment of the dehydration heart rate? During the dehydration, there will be a tachycardia because of compensatory uh, increased heart rate to have a circulation. Then automatically the water loss is there means there is a the loss of water in the body. So the skin elasticity and the eyeball will be going to be affected. The eyeball recession, that means eyeball will be going to the sockets. That will be going to the sockets. So that should be seen by naked eye. And you have to check the distance between the eyeball and to the eyelids. 
to the mm level you have to assess accordingly you have to calculate the dehydration then in during the dehydration that will be a congested mucous membrane because of the concentrated hemo concentration congested to hemo mucous membrane will be there and it will be also be having packiness somewhat dry packiness in the that is the thing you have to note down the dehydrated elements then capillary refill tank so capillary refill tank it's usually commonly practiced in small elbow practice but we can also practice in the larger in gums we have to select the gums area we have to just press with the finger and you have to count 1001 1002 and watch that the blanched area when you are touching the gums there is a blanched area the blood circulation in that area is going to be lost then it is regaining its normal uh, pink color so how many seconds it is taking that is called as capillary refill time estimation that's usually below 2 seconds when you are touching and taking the breathing one or two seconds that should regain its original value original meaning the pink color so suppose it is extended means the animal is in hypovolemic shock or other condition is related to the dehydration and the water loss is there means automatically skin elasticity will be going so skin will be somewhat tough somewhat tough and when you are going for skin tending test that will give you positive so simply based on these parameters we can able to assess the dehydration percentage and we can also calculate uh, percentage uh, by the formula the percent of dehydration based on eyeball resection suppose if you are calculating the uh, distance between the eye lid and to the globe resection eyeball resection so you are measuring suppose uh, the eyeball resection is measured in mm and that should be multiplied into 2 so for example 4 mm a gap between the eyeball and the eyelids is there 4 into 2 meet percentage 4 into 2 meet percentage so simply we can assess the dehydration percentage accordingly you can select the fluid quantity of fluids and type of fluids the another one more technique is skin tenting that is have to pinch the uh, portion of skin in the neck or in the thoracic because it is not commonly practiced in uh, densely having a coat but in case of short haired animals you can practice the, the skin tenting test just uh, pinch the skin and just uh, pull it out and then leave it then it will be going to the original position for a short period so if it is 5 seconds the so skin tent into 2 minus 4 that's a formula for identifying the dehydration through the skin tenting test so take that 4 seconds the skin tent is retaining without going to the normal position so that should be 4 into 2 8 minus 4 4 okay the force per percentage of dehydration is there in the animal but below 5% it is very very difficult to uh, identify clinically let us just look into the picture so sunken eye but i told you so see that any animal which is having a uh, anorexia or any room uh, carbohydrate engorgement definitely if you are uh, seeing the lower eye there will be a depression so there will be a depression it is showing the dehydration so immediately what you have to do is you have to just avoid the eyelid and see the gap between the eyeball and the eyelid if you are able to measure thumb rule or just uh, by the subjectively so you can assess the dehydration percentage another one more point i wanted to clarify the dehydration assessment is subjective variation there will be a subjective variation sometimes i may tell that it's a 6 percentage and somebody tell will 8 8 percentage but ultimately there may be a dehydration but one or two percentage of dehydration uh, alterations may be there with the subject different persons so that is regarding the skill of identifying the dehydration so next thing is the skin target test i already told you just watch the video you are pinching the skin and leaving it and see that it is retaining its or as a skin flap as it it is not going to be subsiding so that indicates the skin elasticity lost due to severe water loss you have to count the seconds how many seconds it is there then you have to apply the formula the seconds 8 seconds into 2 like that you have to suppose the dehydration percentage is more and more the animal may be in the moribund stage that's a comatose stage or recumbency not responding to any stimuli 
how to quantify the dehydration. So far, you have just checked the lot of uh, tests, how to identify the dehydration. So you have to apply those things to the percentage of dehydration. Here, less than 5%, as I told you, there is uh, no obvious clinical signs in sheep and goat. 5% and above dehydration, we can very well appreciate the mild depression. Then there is a mucous membrane color changes, mildly changing into tackiness and mild dryness is there. And it will also have a mild condition. I told you the sunken eye part is called as enophthalmus. Then heart rate and uh, capillary refill time is not going to change much. So that is regarding 5 percentage level. So what about the 6 to 8 percentage level? There is a de severe depression. The animal will be dull and depressed and the moderate decrease in skin turgor. That is skin tinting will be 2 to 4 seconds. And the obvious enophthalmus, slight tachycardia. Tachycardia is just increase of the heart rate due to dehydration. And the capillary refill time is also going to more than 2 seconds. 3 to 4 seconds is recorded in 6 to 8 percent degree. So, if you are absorbing this clinical entity, we can very well appreciate that it is going to be having 6 to 8 percent dehydration. So, up to 8 percent dehydration, the thumb rule is there. We can very well maintain with oral fluid therapy. And more than 8 percent dehydration is there. That should be, there should be some intravenous parental administration of fluids. This is a thumb rule. What about the 9% and 10% level? There is severe de depression, weakness, animal is recommend, unable to get up, mark a degree of uh, loss of skin elasticity, and uh, dark, uh, dry mucous membrane, tachycardia is crossing 100 beats per minute. Normally, it should be 60 to 70 beats per minute in sheep and goat, normal uh, heart rate. The respiratory rate may be 20 to 30. So here, everything will be increased. So suppose in case of any ruminal lactic acidosis, apart from the tachycardia, the animal may also have an increased respiratory rate to compensate to eliminate the carbon dioxide produced from the systemic circulation. So that is called as a compensatory hyperventilation. Uh, that is otherwise called as Kasman's respiration. That is a very significant, significant pathognomonic sign in case of initial stage of ruminal lactic acidosis. Why I am telling this, you know, so there is a tachycardia, tachypnea is there in the dehydration if it is having more than 9% or 10%. Suppose if it is uh, crossing more and more advanced stage of uh, dehydration, if it is not properly had, the animal may be going to be shock, hypolemic shock. Uh, animal which is there more than 12% of dehydration, that means circulatory failure will be there, peripheral circulatory failure will be there. There won't be any proper circulation and there won't be any proper metabolism of uh, tissues going on in the area, peripheral tissues. So that will lead to cold extremities. When you are touching the body of the animal, that will be chill. So that itself we have to tell that the prognosis is unfavorable. So that may be due to severe fluid loss or severely affected with the proper water intake. That is not being there. Okay. Apart from the dehydration assessment, we need to address the electrolyte development is and acid-base imbalances, we have to give some due concern over the glucose abnormalities, either hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia. So hyperglycemia, when we will get some of the disease conditions, so in especially in rabies and endotoxin, any clostridial infections in sheep and goat will have a glucosuria. So maybe hyperglycemia may be there. And sometimes sepsis, in case of young kids, which is having a sepsis. So, due to some other uh, entry, actually enteric infection or with a joint infection or any urinary tract infection, sepsis is a that will lead to hyperglycemia. During that time, if you are uh, selecting the fluid containing dextrose, that will deteriorate the condition of the anemia. So, that's a very, very important point we need to think. And normally, because of uh, cold, windy weather or some abnormal uh, weather conditions, uh, especially in uh, lambs and kids during the first week of uh, uh, after the uh, kidding and lamping. So they will be having some hypoglycemia and hypothermia. All uh, these two things are combined. That will be properly addressed. Then only we will be able to save the kids and lambs during the first week. So we need to estimate the electrolytes 
either by uh, serum biochemical analyzer or we can also go for blood gas analyzer. So blood gas analyzer is there that will give a, uh, acid base imbalances also along with the electrolyte abnormalities that will be measuring the bicarbonate carbon dioxide level. So uh, whether the animal is having acidosis, metabolic acidosis or metabolic alkalosis, very well we can able to appreciate. If these uh, techniques or the advanced diagnostic aids are not there, we have to assess based on the history and clinical sense, history of ingestion of any carbohydrate itself, or any other uh, think about some abdominal uh, distension with fluids passing south. So especially see during the acidosis uh, condition, it, these are the clinical signs we did. And any diarrhea is there. So accordingly, diarrhea means what will happen? More of bicarbonate glass will be there. So we need to think that there is a metabolic alkylo, acidosis. acidosis. Uh, another one more important point, in case of ruminants, especially sheep and goat, during the first week of life, during the first week of life, that will be more towards the metabolic acidosis. So while selecting the fluid, in case of young kids and lambs within 10 to 15 days of period, so they are not taking milk means, mostly it will be having metabolic acidosis conditions. On some cases, maybe exceptional. Then in case of more than, so adult animals, not taking feed, that is anorexia or inappetence or the definitely that will be metabolic alkalosis. So this is a thumb rule. So it may have some alterations, but just to keep it in your mind, it always be like that. Goals of fluid therapy. We have to first rehydrate the animal with the fluid. And next thing is, along with the fluid therapy, we have to give some electrolytes according to the loss. Then we have to restore the acid base in them. These are the three aim. Our aim is to rehydration, replacement of the electrolytes, restoration of the acid base imbalance. So that will give you the fruitful fluid therapy success. Challenge for calculation of the fluid therapy. Already I told you there is a fractions, total body water and the extracellular fluid, intracellular fluid, and the extracellular fluid is again divided into interstitial fluid and vascular volume. Here, two types of fluid requirement is there for each and every animal. Suppose the animal is not having any disease, that is only requiring maintenance and some sensible and insensible loss. For maintenance requirement for adult animals, we need to provide 50 ml per kg per day. That is actually 2 to 4 ml per kg per hour. So this is making the uh, maintenance requirement. So neonates always will have more water, body water. Already I told you, it should be given more, more uh, account more fluid replacement. 80 ml per kg per day, we have to. So this is a one part. Next part step is fluid deficit. Fluid deficit, we have to calculate based on the dehydration percentage, what we have observed in the animals. Based on the CRT, tachycardia, depression, and skin tinting, and the eyeball recession. So we are going to calculate the dehydration that is a percentage of dehydration you can identify. So the formula is percentage of dehydration into body weight, body weight in kg. So that will give the fluid deficit. So maybe because of some diarrhea or sometimes due to fever or some other acidosis conditions, there may be a dehydration. So accordingly, if you are just calculating the dehydration and multiplying with the body weight, you will get a total fluid deficit you can get. So now total fluid requirement is two components. You have to add two components, maintenance requirement and fluid deficit. Okay, so that will give the total fluid requirement for a whole day for an animal. Here, we are not going to give all the fluids at a stretch. So we have to give only what is the immediate requirement to assess uh, or do, to bring back the animal from the dehydration. That is a plasma volume. The step five is the most important. So before coming to the step five, what we need to is, do is extracellular fluid volume, that is total 60%. Again, divided into 20%, 40%. So don't think about 40%. That is reserved for 24 hours period, intracellular fluid. Then 20% we need to replace. How? So we know that the 20% is from the total 
one third. From that, 20 means one third. So, what we should recommend divided by 3 will give the extracellular fluid volume, total volume. So, here that is to be replaced within 4 to 6 hours. Become this plasma volume. So, from the extracellular fluid uh, volume, 20%, 5% is the plasma volume. So, out of 20, 5%. So, what we need to do to identify the plasma volume or intravascular volume? The extracellular fluid volume divided by 4. Why we are giving 4 fractions? 20, we are giving, dividing to 4. 15% is according interstitial fluid, 5% is accounting for the intravascular. That's why 1 4. So the, if you are remembering this easily, we can go for an example. One by one, we will step by step, we can do it. Step one, maintenance requirement for an adult animal. So a goat weighing about 3. 30 kg body weight is estimate, uh, roughly having 8% dehydration. Okay, right. Next step is maintenance requirement 50 ml into 30. We have 1.5 liters of the maintenance requirement. Next, fluid deficit. So already we know that it's having 8% dehydration, 800 into 30. So 2.4 liters is needed to have a fluid deficit. Next thing is total fluid requirement. Combining four, 1.5 liter into 2.4 liters, it's accounting for 3.9 liters total fluid requirement per day. The animal 30 kg goat with 8 percent dehydration should so have a 3.9 liters of water for maintenance and fluid deficit. This is clear. Next thing is step four. So we are going to calculate all each and every fluid volume according to the 60 percent, 40 percent, 20 percent. So I will just highlight what is needed at the end. Now just listen, intracellular fluid, that is a 60% from the total body water, it is a 40%. So 3.9 liters into 2 by 3rd. Why we are accounting 2 by 3rd, 60% is there, 20% is going for extracellular fluid, 40 is there. So 20, 20, 20, three twenties are there. That's why, right. so 2 third, is accounting for the intracellular fluid. That is accounting 2.6 liters. Then come to the step five. We are going to calculate the extracellular fluid. 3.9 liters divided by into one by third. That's a 20. So that is accounting 1.3 liters. This 1.3 liters you have to take into your mind. That should be given for from the for within the four to six hours. Okay. Why I am just stressing is this is a very simple technique. I'll, uh, at the end, I will tell you simple technique how to have a thumb roll while uh, doing the fluid therapy. One point three liters for extra. But we are not uh, going to do all the one point three liters within half an hour period. So four to six hours period we can have to give. So in that the four to six hours period, the interstitial fluid requirement fifteen percent. That is from 20%, 15%, 1.3 into 3 by 4. Why? How it's 3 by 4? 20 is divided into 4. 5, 5, 5, 5, like that. So it is accounting 3 by 4. What's the requirement? 975 ml. The 975 ml is you have to give 4 to 6 hour period. Come to the immediate requirement. Intravascular volume or immediate requirement. That's accounting 5%. Think that 1.3 is the extracellular fluid. 1.3 is the extracellular fluid in the accounting 1.5. So 325 ml need to give to the 30 kg goat with 8% dehydration within 15 to 30 minutes. So this is the actual ultimately what we are going to give the immediate requirement 325 ml. So you just see the weight of the animal 30 kg, only 325 ml. So just think that 10 ml per kg on average we can give as a thumb rule for any dehydration animal accounting for 8% and above. Okay. Suppose still more there, we need to increase 10 to 15 ml. Okay, according to the dehydration percentage. So 8% dehydration means definitely 1 kg requires 10 ml within half an hour period you have to. So when the animal is presented to you, first you are going to start the fluid therapy you have to give at the dose rate of 10 ml per kg. So the flow rate is within that period you have to adjust. 15 to 30 minutes period you can adjust. Suppose the animal is severely dehydrated, you can give at a fast rate. 
but animal is already is having any respiratory compromise or volume load is there anything you think you are already having any edema in the subcutaneous areas areas we need to think uh, while giving fluids and the flow rate will be accessed now the route of fluid administration so main uh, fluid administration route is intraval intravenous 90% of fluid therapy is given through the jugular vein or sometimes jugular vein is not uh, getting uh, properly will be going for a ear vein also suppose any swelling is there in the jugular uh, area so we can uh, prefer the ear veins here the needle gauze size that is very very important so if it is a kid below 10 10 kg or very uh, two to three months old you use 22 gauze to 24 gauze either a needle or you can also use this scalp mince suppose the uh, adult any if it is a 20 kg body weight or more than that we can also use 20 gauz 20 gauz needle or 20 gauz scalp mince and if it is crossing 40 kg and above we need to have a 18 gauz needle also the subcutaneous fluid route is always preferred when the vein is not being properly identified in a severely affected animals so subcutaneously we can administer fluid either in the neck in the adult animals or in the flank region of the young kids flank region of the young kids okay while giving subcutaneous fluids you have to think that two things should not be done so any irritant fluids should not be given or hypertonic fluid fluids hypertonic fluids i will come to the hypertonic fluids so more osmolality fluids should be avoided while giving subcutaneous oral rehydration below 8% is there we can have a oral rehydration it is adopted by the animal very well intraosseous and intraperitoneal routes are rarely used but in young kids it's not been uh, having any vein to be raised to the iv or subcutaneous is not good that time we can go for uh, intraosseous that is very cautiously aseptically you have to do it you have to select the uh, femur head and introduce the into the needle into the uh, spinal line into the bone marrow and you can uh, directly give the you can connect it and give the peritoneal circulate into the circulation intra peritoneal are also be very uh, aseptically you have to do it or else it will have a peritonitis fluid types the major fluid types are crystalloids and colloids what in the slides here the slides are the clear fluids low molecular weight fluids here it is again uh, divided into according to our convenient we are dividing into acidifying solutions and alkalinizing solutions so acidifying solutions are mainly used in case of any alkalosis normal saline or ringer solutions or dn alkalinizing solutions are sodium bicarbonate solutions and ringer slack so here another one more classification also can be based on the osmolality of the fluid we can uh, tell that it is isotonic hypotonic hypotonic usually the isotonic fluids are preferred for normal dehydration cases isotonic again unbalanced solutions normal saline and sodium bicarbonate isotonic sodium bicarbonate 1.3% is a unbalanced solution of isotonic how we are telling that isotonic that's actually the isotonic means it is equal to the plasma osmolality It is equal to the plasma osmolality. So, 300 milli osmol per liter is the normal plasma osmolality. So, if it is accounting for that, that is classified as isotonic. What about the hypertonic? Hypertonic means more osmolality, more than 300 milli osmol per liter. Hypotonic is less than 300 milli osmol per liter. Hypotonic is very very rarely used in the veterinary practice. Half saline. half saline is mainly preferred for small mouth practice which is having a cardiac and renal diseases but it is not commonly routinely available in the market then here isotonic again another one more thing is balanced electrolyte solutions that is ultimately all the electrolytes are in a balanced level so ringus lactate or ringus acetate solutions are there that will be uh, coming under the category of balanced electrolyte solutions hypotonic solutions very rarely we are using but commonly the sodium bicarbonate 5% or 7.5% 8% is indicated for the treating the cases of ruminal lactic acidosis okay. another thing is any pregnancy toxemia cases 
we are using higher percentage of dextrose solutions, either 10%, 20%, 25%, or 50%. And hypertonic, small volume resuscitation is also there. HSS, that is a hypertonic saline solution, that is 7.5% of sodium chloride. That is uh, also be indicated for some conditions that will be useful for us to revive the animals from the endotoxic and hemorrhagic shock. The next category is colloids. Uh, that is differing from the crystallites with a molecular weight. High molecular weight components, they will be called, otherwise called as plasma volume expanders. They will be otherwise called as plasma volume expanders. When the animal is having severe dehydration, along with the anemia, we need to think about colloids first. You have to administer 4 to 5 ml per kg body weight. You have to initially you have to administer. Then the colloids to be followed with the crystallites because colloids will be retained in the vessels and the crystallites will be making the water. So what is the function of the colloids is retaining the crystallite fluid inside the muscular volume, muscular compartment and by the way it is maintaining the pressure, maintaining the circulation. In case of, I think this is a more common problem in case of uh, any anemia cases. Anemia cases, if you are giving the crystallites, that means the NS, DNS, oral, if you are giving, the dehydration is not going to be improved. Dehydration percentage is not going to be improved or uh, revived. So the loss of fluid is keep on going. That, that means leaky vessels in the body. So be due to septic shock or anemia. So to retain the administered uh, crystallite fluid, we have to give colloids. So the colloids, natural colloids are whole blood and plasma. Synthetic is available in the market, metastarch, dextrons, or ureotated collagen, or modified gelatin solutions. They are there in the market, but in case of any anemia cases, before going for blood transfusion, please consider colloids and crystallite solutions. Without colloids, if you are using crystallites, more dilution, the animal may develop pulmonary edema, and the death may be. So if you are using colloids, we can also just sustain the life of the animal after uh, colloids administration. And colloids are also having some, uh, some disadvantages. These are the plasma volume expanders there in the market. Etastars, pentastarch, that is uh, the trade name is volume, hydroxyethyl starch. So you can administer 4 to 5 ml per kg body weight. Then hemocyl is commonly uh, used by the veterinarians in the dog practice. This is urea treated collagen. So this is all the same dose, 4 to 5 ml per kg. So here, the correction of metabolic acidosis. Let us uh, have another one more uh, calculation point. It is uh, very much useful for you to address the ruminant lactic acidosis in the field condition. So we need to give sodium bicarbonate. So how much to give? And uh, what is the basic rationale behind it? We need to know that. So usually, usually the bicarbonate deficit you are going to calculate, but it is not possible without any uh, blood gas analysis. So instead of that, we can also just have some uh, kits available in the market, serum biochemical kits is measuring the carbon dioxide level. So the total carbon dioxide level will be measured. Normally, some animals may have a total carbon dioxide level, normal carbon dioxide level is a 25 milli equivalent per ml of blood, okay, normal level. If you are measuring the carbon dioxide level of the animal which is having a dehydration or acid base imbalance, so we are able to calculate the base deficit. Our aim is to calculate the base deficit. So the normal total carbon dioxide level, that is the standard one, 25 milli equivalent per ml, measured may be 40 or 30 or 35. That is measured 25, in 25 is the total, uh, normal. Measured in a particular animal, maybe uh, 30, 35, 40. So it may be more than that also. So that will give the deficit. Suppose you think about it 25 minus 35 minus 10 is the base deficit. That will be applied for selecting the sodium bicarbonate level. Selecting the sodium bicarbonate level. So once the base of deficit is identified based on the normal and the measured carbon dioxide level, we will be able to up, uh, calculate the bicarbonate requirement, calculation of bicarbonate requirement to uh, alleviate the metabolic acidosis.
in adult animals there is a formula milli equivalent of bicarb required is equal to base deficit base deficit we have calculated here and body weight in kgs the correction factor is 0.3 that is the formula to identify milli equivalent of bicarbonate required to treat a ruminal lactic acidosis case or metabolic acidosis case but the same thing same formula is applied for the neonates also but the correction factor is 0.6 instead of 0.3 that is the difference for the adult and the neonates so now let us go for an calculation so before entering the calculation so some thumb rule is there in the field already some established facts are there if you are utilizing that you will be able to identify the milli equivalent of bicarb requirement easily in ruminal lactic acidosis cases so mild cases they have classified minus 5 milli equivalent deficit base deficit already we have seen the formula isn't it this of this formula they have seen so they have already calculated mild case of ruminal lactic acidosis may have a base deficit of by minus 5 milli equivalent moderate case that moderate case means it will be more uh, sunken eyeball mild cases means only the uh, slight in indigestion will be there and diarrhea will be there but in moderate cases there may be a dehydration and it will also abdominal distension and fluid flushing sound is there in the uh, left to parallel bar fossa and it will also have a diarrhea another one more thing is diarrhea is the positive prognostic sign when there is a acidosis if it is there we have to allow that's why we are going to eliminate the putrefied material outside and it will be the animal is going to be recovered as early as possible and it will have a positive prognostic sign and severe cases of ruminal lactic acidosis there will be a fluid selection bicarbonate should be given so for that we need to have a the base deficit minus 15 milli these are the calculated values you remember that mild cases moderate cases severe cases that is according to your subject you just if you are observing the clinical signs you have to pass it so for that they have given the values base deficit values they take an example 6 year old sheep weighing around 30 kg body weight it is having a severe carbohydrate engorgement leading to ruminal lactic acidosis excess intake of carbohydrate so step 1 the milli equivalent of bicarb required formula is it's adult one isn't it base deficit in body weight into point three. so you have to apply that severely affected isn't it severely affected means minus 15 30 kg point three. it is roughly giving 135 milli equivalent 135 milli equivalent so now we have identified that how much bicarbonate you have to give to the 30 kg animal with the severe lactic acidosis so then uh, next step is we need to know that what are the fluids bicarbonate fluids available in the market so there is a 8.5 per 4 percent solution of bicarbonate that is accounting 1 ml is accounting for 1 milli equivalent that is 1 ml of 8.4 percent of sodium bicarbonate is accounting for a 1 milli equivalent or 1 milli mole here the sodium bicarbonate there is no uh, change that milli equivalent and milli mole is more or less same the next thing is 7.5 percent solution also available in the market so that is accounting for 0.89 milli equivalent per ml of 7.5% sodium bicarbonate 5% it's not available we are going to make 5% level also so that is accounting 0.6 milli equivalent so the 1 ml of 5% sodium bicarbonate if you are administering you are going to make up the 0.6 milli equivalent of base okay bicarbonate required you are replacing so you are going to calculate the step 3 so our requirement is 135 milli equivalent of sodium bicarbonate so the availability is 8.4% sodium bicarbonate so 1 ml is 1 milli equivalent so 135 ml of 8.4% of sodium bicarbonate is required to treat a case of 30 kg severe lactic acidosis 30 kg sheep with severe lactic acidosis as such if you are giving that will be leading to sometimes cerebral acidosis quicker faster rate of higher percentage of sodium bicarbonate administration to the sheep or goat or whatever may be the animal it will cause the blood brain barrier and it will lead to water and carbon dioxide molecule fractions and cerebral acidosis may develop and the animal will show the champing of jaws while giving the sodium bicarbonate then it will also have a frothy fine frothy salivation 
I have seen on case with the fine froth salivation and animal diet during the treatment. So we need to uh, cautiously give sodium bicarbonate by dilution rate. That to don't dilute more. So you know that 1.3 percentage is isotonic. 5%, 7.5%, 8.4% are hypertonic. Hypertonic is to be given. So just a simple another one more calculation. If you are mixing the 135 ml of 8.4% sodium bicarbonate with the 92 ml, that is making to 5% of sodium bicarbonate left. Okay, that can be given at the dose rate of 2 ml per kg. So if it is you are having 8.4%, you can do the this work. Or else, if you are having only 7.5% solution available in the market as an ampule or vial, you have to calculate. So, 1 ml of 7.5% of sodium bicarbonate is equal to 0.89 milliequivalent. So, 135 ml, how much do we need? We need 151 ml of 7.5%. Here, 135 ml is 8.4%. If it is 7.5%, 151 ml is needed. That is a simple calculation. 1 ml is meant for 0.89 ml equivalent. Then <coughs> what about the 135 ml ml equivalent? Automatically, we will get 151 ml. That is also be diluted with the distilled water into 5% level. So if you are adding 75.5 ml of normal saline along with the 150 ml of of 7.5% sodium bicarbonate that will lead to 5% level. We can administer slowly to the animal which is having a severe lactic acid. This is the initial period. Half of the dose you have to give up in a higher percentage. Then you can go for 1.3% of sodium bicarbonate remaining. Now the consideration we can give while treat the pulmonary lactic acid cases. You think that mild cases, you have to give 1.3% of sodium case sodium bicarbonate solution. And somebody will be liking to give lactate, acetate, gluconate containing solutions because these are the agents, they are the precursor for the develop, uh, bicarbonate. When the animal is having adequate hydration and adequate liver uh, function, the lactate will be converted into bicarbonate. But that is also not that much level what we are giving 5% level or 1.3% level. So we need to give voluminous weight. Yeah, to have a required bicarbonate replacement. So that's why we are advising not to go for any lactate, acetate, gluconate containing solution in case of ruminal lactic acidosis, even in, its, in the case of mild cases. You administer sodium bicarbonate solution and we can go for follow up with the next day when this lactate you can give. So the acetate is going to be converted into muscle itself. Lactate needs liver function. And the circulation. Suppose if you are administering a thing that severely affected animal, it's a severe dehydration. If you are administering sodium, uh, uh, ringless lactate solution, but that is going to be accumulated in the peripheral circulation because already the animal is having a circulatory failure and it is not going to reach the liver. So it is not going to be converted into bicarbonate. So ultimately, lactate, already lactate is there in the systemic circulation by absorption from the A tract. It is adding uh, fuel on the air. Okay, please try to avoid any uh, intermediate stage of fluids to have a bicarbonate. In moderate to severe cases, the bicarbonate five percent level you can administer. The flow rate I told you here, yeah, isn't it? Two ml per kg per minute. Two ml per kg per minute. You can give five percent sodium bicarbonate solution to a severely or moderately affected ruminal lactic acidosis. So that is uh, regarding the metabolic acidosis. Regarding metabolic alkalosis, it is not commonly seen in case of uh, animals, unless otherwise is having anorexia for a short period or one or two days, there may be chances of getting alkalosis. So we, the fluid of choice is normal saline, or normal saline or dextrose normal saline, DNS. We can do. The metabolic alkalosis is also be due to some toxic, toxic, toxicity or Excessive uh, intake of some portion of the diet. What is that? So, when the unaccustomed access to the urea, urea toxicity, that will lead to alkalosis. So, that should be addressed with the normal saline IV and 
you have to give a vinegar vinegar that is a actually that is available in the market you have to dilute it and administer for uh, adult cattle you can give uh, three to five liters but cheap and goat you can go for 300 to 500 ml after diluting equal volume of uh, water then in case of another one more uh, condition is going to have alkalosis that is a protein intake excessive protein intake so for those condition also you can go for a intravenous normal saline administration along with the vinegar administration and you can also select some fluids containing potassium and chloride so that is also that's almost sodium chloride along with the potassium chloride calcium chloride that's been just lactate also there but here the lactate is there automatically that will again fueling on the fire to the alkalosis so avoid the ringless lactate in case of metabolic alkalosis already i discussed about the hypertonic saline resuscitation so that is useful for any hemorrhagic shock loss of more volume of blood lost and endotoxemic shock and severe dehydration even after giving some fluid therapy it's not getting improvement in the hydration status so for that we need to use hypertonic saline it is having some advantage the dose rate is 4 ml per kg body weight over a period of 3 to 10 minutes aggressively you have to give a intravascularly then followed by what will happen it will increase the osmotic anaerobic pressure it will increase the hydrostatic pressure so blood volume will be improved blood pressure will be improved how it is it is drawing the fluid from the other area interstitial area or in the other fluid compound intracellular area so that is making the circulatory volume will be uh, adequate to have a normal hydration so followed by the hypertonic saline we can also go for normal isotonic saline solutions and uh, some other fluids so that is the advantage of the hypertonic saline we maintain the blood pressure by drawing our blood pressure blood volume by drawing the fluid from the intracellular space or interstitial space but if you are leaving as such with the hypertonic saline administration the animal is again going to have a severe dehydration of intracellular and interstitial tissue but you have to replace those things by only but it will have a short period of action so so far we have discussed metabolic alkalosis metabolic acidosis these are the major acid base imbalances we have to address in the sheep and goat or whatever may be the animals some of the special considerations i am going to give for fluid therapy in sheep and goat section so here nowadays we are receiving lot of cases recommend cases in the advanced stage of pregnancy either it may be a eu or as a doe is either eu or doe is having a <clears throat> one or two days any some other illnesses and is not taking feed properly or drinking water properly the animal may experience hypocalcemia the clinical signs may be dilated people recommend see cold extremities anal sphincter relaxation Uh, when you are auscus auscultating the heart it will have a tachycardia and uh, pulse will be weak so if you are identifying that animal in advanced stage of pregnancy just 10 days ahead of uh, uh, parturition so mostly we will be thinking that pregnancy toxemia but is consider hypercalcemia is also another one more potential diagnosis in that particular condition you just treat if the animal is having dilated people you try to think two things one is a uh, stop Uh, cerebral hypoxia is there means there will be dilated people or maybe any uh, chlorinated hydrocarbon toxicity there is a dilated people and hypercalcemia is because of smooth muscle contraction the calcium is needed so that should be taken to account we need to give 50 to 150 ml of 23% calcium porogluconate intravenously that will help us to make the animal to stand within a short period of time immediately after fluid therapy the animal may stand before that it may be a comatose stage like you were third stage of milk fever in cattle it will respond well but it is not going to cause any abortion don't worry about it then some of the cases after calving or after kidding or lambing also be there that will also be addressed with the same type of fluid therapy and you have to follow it with oral calcium supplementations along with phosphorus and vitamin d3 that vitamin d3 injections vitamin ad3 injections are available in the market if you are giving that the calcium absorption assimilation may be more and calcium utilization or retaining the calcium from renal tissue uh, tissue also be more so that will ultimately improve the hypercalcemic stage okay right then pregnancy toxemia is uh, rarely seen in field conditions once 
triplets, quadruplets, or twins, rarely will lead to pregnancy toxemia. That is uh, going to occur in the advanced stage of pregnancy, as we know that the glucose, the, because of anorexia, due to occupation of the cryo the space is not there for the rumen to fill. So less feed intake make the animal to have a negative energy balance, ultimately leading to uh, ketone body production. So it look like a ketone ketosis. We have to treat with a five to seven gram of glucose. The glucose percentage to be higher percent, ten percent or twenty five percent or twenty percent. If we are preferring fifty percent, that will be better one. Six to eight times per daily without eating. If the animal is standing showing signs of pregnancy toxemia, you can go for glucose administration. If the animal is recommend, don't use because <clears throat> there is no benefit of glucose intravenous administration in case of pregnancy toxemia with recommends. For those recommend pregnancy toxemic animals, you have to use the balanced electrolyte solutions. You have to use the balanced electrolyte solutions. Make the animal to be uh, hydrated properly and give some fluid electrolytes to have adequate muscle strength like electrolytes like potassium and calcium, then animal will be able to recover. Then another one more thing is you have to go for termination of pregnancy or go for cesarean section to get the animal back. The next condition is, such a social condition is hypoglycemia in neonates. So we need to give 50% of uh, dextrose solution at 0.2 ml per kg body weight or it may be also 10% or 20% solutions you can also give. So those animals will be recommend and animal will be risk listlessness, uh, hypothermia also. After giving the glucose, immediately they will get up and it will walk. That's a very amazing uh, thing. So the owner may be appreciating that because it's near hypoglycemia, glucose deficit, automatically animal will be recommended. Here, another one more contradicting thing. Hypoglycemia is always there in neonates along with hypothermia. Nowadays, uh, we are encountering some of the same type of conditions. Recommend C, uh, abdominal distension with uh, slight diarrhea is there. Those conditions are coming under the category of floppy kid syndrome or drunken lamb syndrome. Drunken lamb syndrome. This is a common management problem. Nowadays, we are experiencing the field conditions. In these conditions, if we are giving glucose, exos condition containing solutions, you may lose that animal. So you have to get the history properly, get the history properly, observe the animal properly. Abdominal distance is not there in case of hypoglycemic animals. Abdominal distance with the true depressing sound is there in case of floppy kid syndrome or drunken lamb syndrome. So the owner may report that, sir, uh, 10 days back it kidded, sir, or lamb. The five days it drank uh, milk properly, sir. After that, it started uh, abdominal distance and some indigestion problems, mild diarrhea is there. The animal is going for recommend C. So those conditions coming under the category of floppy kid syndrome or drunken lamb syndrome, those cases, we need to assess the blood gas analyzer means we will get acidosis, looking like acidosis. You have to pass the stomach tube and evacuate the putrefied milk. It may also be because of some bacterial infections, excessive E. coli or clostridial uh, infections. Clostridial infections are E. coli infection of the milk in the uh, abomasum may also lead to that. That will lead to abomasum load, abomasum exchange. So you have to evacuate and ask the owner not to feed milk for a 30, 24 to 36 hours period. You have to give only isotonic sodium bicarbonate intravenously and we need to give some oral antacids like uh, available in the market as a megablota or magnesium oxide hydroxide, so jellucil or zygin as we are using in the human, that will be used. And another one more thing, baking soda also be given after diluting with the uh, water. Okay, that is a main uh, counteracting fact, hypoglycemia and floppy kitchen. Two ends are there. One is the acidosis, one is a dextrose containing solution. So we have to judicially diagnose and we have to select the judicial fluid therapy in these young animals. Sepsis, she is also, in adult animal sepsis means very, very easily you can identify young animals, just uh, within a 10 to 15 days of uh, kicking or lamping. So the animals will be having some uh, still uh, umbilical infection or uh, some other infections, uh, entering infections with E. coli. will also develop septicemia. So normally the septicemia may have a hyperglycemia. 
septicemia may have a hyperglycemia in those conditions also the animal may be recommend and be very flaccid and it look like a hypoglycemic if you are using exposed containing solutions the animal may deteriorate and die so for that also we are we are having the hand held glucometer are useful for the human beings that may be one of the important criteria to identify the sepsis with hyperglycemia we can select the bald selective solution rather than the dextrose containing solution and you can save the animals this hypoglycemia floppy gut syndrome sepsis these three areas we have to concentrate properly diagnose and select proper treat therapy in these cases okay and we have come to the end we are going to discuss about some of the special consideration of the fluid therapy suppose the animal is hypothermic you have to give a warm fluids you have to fluids to be warm and like just to keep it in a water bath and for after some time you just check it with your back side of your uh, hand <clears throat> palm and the fluid is not that much uh, hot you can give that is actually below the anticipated uh, body temperature normal body temperature of the particular species of animals you have to heat and give more heat with the nature the bed so that to be avoided the next one is another thing is hypothermia you can also go for some management aspect like uh, warm water bottles you can keep it near the garden you can put the uh, lightings incandescent bulbs near to the animals to have a more what heat then you have to expose the sunlight for a short period of time then hypothermia is the heat stress you have to use the cold cool cooling the fluids and then you want you have to give through the iv and you have to sprinkle how to cool you have to keep it in your fridge and after some time you check it the temperature is not too chill and it should be 5 uh, degree or 6 to 10 degree below the anticipated normal temperature level you have to give so that is uh, called as core cooling of the hypothermic or heat stress animals then you can also sprinkle lukewarm water over the animal and put a fan by the way of uh, evaporation that will be having better uh, normal temperatures will brought from the hypothermia in case of anemic animals and hypoglycemic animals protein is low you have to select the fluids very judiciously and don't go for overloading of the system judicial use judicial use of whether it's needed use or is less quantity of fluids that to hypotonic solutions can be administered in cases of any ppr other pneumonic signs ppr may also have a uh, pneumoenteritis so we need to give fluids in case of ppr the pneumoenteritis the rheumatitis having lot of dehydration we need to select the fluid in this lactate to replace the uh, metabolic acidosis and uh, in case of pneumonia you have to select the fluid appropriately and dose also be very minimal but uh, strictly speaking without any dehydration in pneumonia cases don't give any fluid therapy that is contraindicated pneumonia alone is there how to identify the pneumonia you have to go for auscultation animal have extended head and neck and having a breathing difficulty so you can identify very well and sometimes may have oral breathing also and you auscultate the both side trachea and both side of the lung field you can get a crackles and wheezes so those conditions don't give fluid therapy if you are keeping the animal rat recommends especially a young kids slams uh, if you are giving a very little quantity of fluid you will lose that animal because of pulmonary edema will develop and some severe cases of dehydration along with the pneumonia is there and the mucus secretions to be stimulated for those conditions minimal fluid therapy in case of any severe dehydration with pneumonia can be given along with Uh, fluid therapy we need to give some diuretic also to avoid uh, pneumo, uh, pulmonary edema so for diluting any drugs what type of fluids you can use normal saline dns or d5 here the d5 if you are giving only 5% of dextrose is utilized for the energy remaining things is only make up only it is not going to make up the any electrolyte balance suppose normal saline and dns that is going to give some electrolytes because the no sodium is to be needed for the volume needs okay and uh, in case of ringless lactate don't mix any drugs especially the oxytocin tricycline and sodium bicarbonate solutions so that will have a precipitation and uh, sometimes you can also appreciate the clear precipitation you can very well appreciate and or else sometimes it have a chillish the calcium present in the ringless lactate may be chelating the calcium oxytocin cycline 
sometimes that may not be useful even after the therapy you are not going to achieve your success in the treatment of any uh, blood protein disease okay mainly avoid any drugs to be added into the intestine and uh, some of the things are uh, sodium containing fluids that is actually yeah, there is a two compartments of the circuit problem and the, in case of any shock there is a circuit problem circuit problem is peripheral circulatory failure another one is pump problem that means heart is not going to pump that is a pump problem suppose the sodium containing fluids especially in hypovolemia more useful for the circuit problems rather than the pump problems the pump problem is congestive heart failure the sodium containing solution is contraindicated in case of pump problem not to the circuit problems here if you are using sodium uh, chloride that will retain the water also so there will be a volume maintenance will be there in case of hypo just again i am just stressing the point sodium containing solution is very much useful in case of hypovolemic shock the two circulatory pain and then another one more contradict here is contradict sodium containing fluid is to be avoided in case of any congestive heart failure but congestive heart failure is not commonly seen in case of any sheep and goat but nowadays we are also recording some cases with the brisk edema and jowl edema on the jugular vein engorgement maybe some foreign body penetrating the heart is having leading to cardiac tamponade that might be the reason for the congestive heart failure sometimes maybe endocarditis or some pericarditis due to some other reason also leading to congestive heart failure so if you are having congestive heart failure in sheep and goat don't go for sodium containing fluid it is fueling on the fire again another one more thing hypoproteinemic hypoalbuminemic anemia animal which is having low protein especially albumin level is there sodium containing fluids to be avoided why it is going to bind with the albumin again it will reduces the oncological pressure and it will exacerbate the the subcutaneous edema of the animal uh, sodium again the uh, albumin level will be reduced by the sodium containing fluids the colloids already we discussed the colloids the plasma volume expanders if you are giving colloids in the congestive heart failure so again it is leading to death of the animal so avoid in case of congestive heart failure only use in case of anemia with the severe hypovolemic shock and the renal function is not properly there leading to oliguria is there so that time for using colloids it to lead to pulmonary edema and death so renal failure cases you have to avoid but uh, renal failure cases are less in case of large animals so far we have discussed about the um, fluid transfusion that is a fluid therapy so the one of the part of the fluid therapy is the blood transfusion so sheep is having a seven blood groups and goat is having a five blood groups but there is no need to have a cross matching before uh, doing the first transfusion in a rumens so you can very well appreciate uh, blood transfusion by collection from the donors and to transfusion to recipients when you will go for blood transfusion any bleeding disorders or any anemia due to hemoprotein diseases after the treatment animal is not recovering properly still the the packed cell volume the temperature below 15 percentage of packed cell volume or hemoglobin percentage of 5 percent level 5 percent 5 uh, uh, gram per deciliter level and rbc level is below uh, anticipated level so you need to replace the rbcs by the way improving the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood for that we need to go for blood transfusion you can very well collect 10 to 15 ml of uh, blood from a donor healthy donor healthy donors can have any pregnancy not having any diseases and ecto and parasites and uh, that donors should be selected you can collect from the jugular vein you can use the acd bag adenine citrate and dextrose bags are available that is for men for the human beings same bag 350 ml you can collect so for either every 50 ml of uh, blood collection we need to have 7 ml of anticoagulant so 49 ml 49 ml of anticoagulants present in the blood bag available in the market that is meant for 50 ml i am just uh, giving the something suppose if you want to take only 100 ml we need to take only 40 ml of the anticoagulant and we can collect it there many things you can discard it then we get up weighing balance the put the weight while collection up from jugular vein that has to be kept in the weighing balance if you are reaching 100 g and very well disconnect and give to the recipients before going for the recipients blood transfusion you have to give antihistamines 
10 to 15 ml agada blood to avoid the transfusion reactions so the initial transfusion is done at 0.1 ml per kg body weight that means drop by drop you have administered and then if it is not having any transfusion reactions like pick up hypothermia any salivation coughing fever you can very well have particle eruptions you can very well start the fast rate of administration 20 ml per kg per hour after the minutes of starting the blood transfusion so the blood transfusion is uh, is another one more life saving procedure uh, apart from the fluid therapy the blood transfusion and fluid therapy is are the two important uh, procedures we can very well appreciate to save the life of someone so we need to address those things in needy cases so the anemic animal collection of uh, blood and uh, administration of the blood to the sheep and uh, administration to the kid i wanted to uh, just to tell that you can just go for some transfusion boldly in case of any needy cases and uh, you have to address the primary cause also maybe ectoparasites maybe lice infection ear infestations and uh, ticks in case of kids and if you are giving 10 to 15 ml of uh, blood in uh, one or two kg uh, animals uh, it's very well you can save the animal you can directly collect it from the jugular vein with a syringe after adding the anticoagulant and uh, apart if you are not having in the blood bags you can also use the uh, heparin uh, sodium citrate according to the need you can collect and give uh, abstract of fluid selections in sheep and goat it's roughly i have just uh, made so ruminal lactic acidosis we can give sodium bicarbonate metabolic alkalosis means normal saline and ems hypoglycemia you can go for a higher percent of dextrose solution hypokalemia potassium chloride or ringus lactate hyperkalemia suppose if animal is having hyperkalemia you can give dextrose and sodium bicarbonate solutions fever usually fever may be there it's just fluid therapy either ms and and uh, rl and uh, fever cases there is already the metabolism will be more the dextrose containing solution may be avoided but uh, there is no strict rule to avoid but if it is given again the little bit elevation of temperature but that is not going to cause any harmless harmfulness and diarrhea there is a loss of uh, potassium sodium chloride and bicarbonate so you need to give uh, alkalinizing actually uh, solution sodium bicarbonate 1.3% or ringus lactate anorexia starvation during during that time you need to give uh, because anorexia in case of uh, ruminants lead to metabolic alkalosis so dns you can prefer because starvation is also there abnormal involvement there is a metabolic alkalosis hypochloremia hypokalemia so we can give dns but oral is a questionable one hypocalcemia calcium borogluconide floppy gitt syndrome sodium bicarbonate and ringus lactate sepsis we have to avoid dextrose containing solution and calcium in case of sepsis we are giving calcium the animal may deteriorate and die and pregnancy toxemia if standing dextrose higher percentage and if we recommend animal we have to go for balanced electrolyte solutions to revive them and uh, then the assessment so we have given the uh, fluid therapy how to assess whether you are uh, achieved your goal or not the mentation will be improved the animal will have a urination defecation and the dull and depressed animal will be little bit uh, uh, just bright eye ball recession is going to improve skin elasticity is going to be improved and the animal is going to be recommend animal sometimes after that treatment is going to get up and is walk here if you are having a heart uh, proper heart is having a proper function kidney is having a filtration mechanism properly you can administer any fluid that is a balanced polyanionic crystalloid solution very confidently nothing to happen and another one more quote is dumpest kidney is a smarter than the smartest clinician we may be thinking that we are the smartest clinician but the kidney is going to manage all the things whatever things you are giving 